Today I'm going to show you how to use this in order to make your body with the Maximum Guitar Works template system. Alright, so this is part three of going through the Maximum Guitar Works template system, the Tele template system, uh, and, and we are at the point where we're going to work on the body. After the first episode, we made the fretboard. So look back in the previous episodes and you'll see that. And I also instituted a kit, a Tele Maximum Guitar Works template kit that includes the body with the standard pickup routes for a Tele, including the push blocks for safety when we go to route this body today, and a fretboard template, a, a neck template, a standard pick guard template, and the neck pocket template that also has some drop top routing in it. And I'm going to show you both methods today. I'm going to show you using a one and three quarter inch slab of wood to make the standard Telecaster body. And I'm also going to use the drop top routes in the neck pocket uh, template in order to prepare this slab of walnut to have this piece of paduke on top of that, which at some point then is going to be built to take this neck, the paduke neck with the binding, and we're going to end up binding the, the paduke top of this, that same cream color, and I think it's going to look pretty amazing. So anyway, that is what we're going to work on today, but we're main focus once again is the templates. Those of you that have already purchased my templates, this is to kind of help you along. Uh, certainly other people using other templates or making your own templates. Some of these techniques may cross over, but some of them are pretty unique to my templates. All right, the first thing when we've got our body blank that we want to really focus on is the condition of the wood and any defects that it might have. Because we can figure out which side of this block of wood would be best. Now the only defect that I have in this really nice um, poplar slab is one kind of looks like the leftover remnants of a knot right up there, which doesn't go through to the other side. So I'm thinking it's pretty superficial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my template so that that falls inside the neck pocket area. And that should leave me everything else to be pretty clean. Now this is going to be an opaque finish on this particular guitar. Um, so I'm not really concerned about those type of things, but there's certainly considerations. Now I've got two small pieces of tape on here and all they are for is to help me get this aligned and to roughly hold this in place. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do at this point is hold it in place. I've got everything laid out how I want it. It looks like I'm avoiding uh, any problem areas and so I like this placement. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to drill the two holes. Now here's the critical thing is these holes, they've got drilling bushings here to guide your quarter inch drill bit in order to accept a quarter inch dowel pin as, as your alignment um, pin features. With the standard Tele template, if you're going to utilize that and not do anything fancy like the belly cut template or the neck heel recess area template that I have, um, or anything like that that uses a back template, then you really don't have to go all the way through. Uh, but that's the way I do it because I like to be able to transfer that alignment whenever I want to. Now to ensure that my drill bit is absolutely perpendicular, I double checked it with a square. So I check it one direction, I check it 90 degrees off that direction, and it should be perfectly perpendicular to that surface, that table, in both of those directions. Now just for caution's sake, I wouldn't go and drill the second hole right away because what if the template kind of shifts a little bit on you and these then holes are not perfectly aligned. So what I'm going to do is establish an anchor point with the one that I've already uh, drilled in. So even if this thing moves, it won't be a problem because it'll be anchored in at that point. 
Just flush cut off that extra, and that is now an anchor point. Now we can double check that our second point hasn't shifted, and we can then drill that out. All right, now that we have our second point drilled out, that makes our alignment set in stone. At this point, it's gonna remain this way no matter what template we throw on because they're all gonna use these off-body alignment points. Now, I will say the order of operations really can, can be whatever you want it to be. I could put it on there the neck pocket template right now, and I could route out the neck po pocket and be done with it. Um, I can go and, and start routing out my uh, pickup cavities, my electronics uh, cavities right now. No problem whatsoever. But I like to do the outside first. And so what I'm going to do is trace the outside, take it to the bandsaw, and cut it off uh, just like I normally do, try to get about two millimeters outside the edge of this pencil line. And that is gonna then give me the shape that I can route out and then that shape is finalized. Then I can swap the templates out and do all the other work inside here. These dowels are pretty tight, but that's a good thing because that's just ensuring that I got perfect rigidity side to side, that this template's not gonna move. Now I do put a couple pieces of tape under this when I'm gonna do the main routing, only because I may choose to lift this up with the handles and I don't want the template route uh, falling off and dropping on top of the router. So it's just more of a safety precaution than anything. But here's where I mount the handles, and this is really the only phase of the operation that needs the handle grips. This is one of the scariest parts uh, for a lot of my students is getting here with and holding on for dear life uh, with a traditional template setup and getting a big router bit that's trying to take this inch and a three quarter chunk of wood out all at once and some of them don't cut as close to the line as they really should and it's it can grab and tear out and it's it's kind of not a comforting experience this is why i developed this system for my templates is i can put these on uh, not so tight that they can't move so i can back them off just a hair and I can move them around and reposition as necessary. They do have the foam grips on the bottom, and as I'm pressing down and working around the router table, it will hold on uh, really nicely. And, and because of the secure grip that, that you have in, in routing the profile of this guitar body, you're gonna get a better cut and you're, it's gonna be a lot safer. You won't have the grabbing and tearing out that you normally would. And this is a big step, because once you get this done, you've got what looks like a guitar body and you start feeling pretty good. And he's thinking, okay, now I see I'm gonna have something to go with my neck that I've already made. All right, we're ready to go now. Uh, one of my other videos, and I've mentioned this before, but somebody recommended that for my new template system, I need a top bearing bit to get this infinity bit. And I did buy it, and I really like it a lot. Uh, it seems to cut well. Um, haven't had any issues with it, so that's good. You need at least, um, typically it's a two inch high, one and three quarter minimum, but two inch high top bearing bit in order for, uh, to utilize this template system uh, correctly. So I, I'm just got it positioned where the blade is just barely getting all of the wood, and that leaves about half of this top bearing on the template, but that's more than enough for stability. Again, the pins are providing the rigidity to the template to give the accuracy of the cut. I only put the tape in there just so if I decided to lift this away that it didn't drop off. Now when we're cutting, we are cutting, moving the material to the left, okay? So the cutter is going to the right, and that is what we call a conventional cut, okay? You could go the other direction called a climb cut, and I don't recommend it, although with the paddles, you could probably do it in short little spurts if you had a trouble area that you were worried about uh, chipping out, um, but for the most part, your conventional cut is going to be your best mode of operation when using a router table.
Did you notice as I was working around, I was pivoting these paddle grips in order to give myself the best leverage that I could for that area that I was cutting. And that's to maintain control. I had to up the speed a little bit in the beginning because I was getting too much dust and not enough chips. And so I had to find that sweet spot um, of, of the feed rate versus the cutter speed. It's what we call chip load, okay, in the CNC world. But do you do the same thing with the router table? You're trying to create the chip load where you're creating as many shavings and chips as possible and as little dust as possible. And then that, that way you know you've got the right feed rate and the right speed of the bit when you get the optimal performance like that. All right, once you get the perimeter routed, now you can come back and take the paddles off because you really don't need them for anything else. In fact, they just get in the way. And if we wanted to route out the traditional Telecaster pickup cavities and electronics cavities, we could do that right now. But I'm going to switch over and do the neck pocket first. Sometimes these pins get so tight, it's hard to actually pull this template off. So what I recommend is just take a little screwdriver and just pound those pins all the way through. Easiest way, and that way the template will be a whole lot easier to get off without risking flexing and stressing it and possibly breaking it. Now the next template is gonna be a neck pocket template. I'm using uh, one with a slightly different variation, but they're, they're all pretty similar. And the cool thing about these pins is they do such a good job of holding tight that I don't even need tape here. What I will use, however, is a nasty piece of scrap 2x4 that I've cut to 1 and 3 quarter inches tall that I'm going to use on the front side of this template to provide a little bit of support for that acrylic so that it can't flex or bow. Now you could take the router bit and just start working that out, but I'll be honest, it's a lot easier to take a Forstner bit and take off about a half an inch of that material. The neck pocket needs to be 5 eighths of an inch deep. If you use a Forstner bit, you want to stop at half inch because that point at the end of the Forstner bit will put dimples in the bottom of your pocket. Unless you think that's more aerodynamic being that way, then have at it and put dimples in there. I would prefer not to, so I stop at a half inch and then I route out completely flush the rest of it. Okay, I've got my favorite half inch router bit in there. I've got triple stacked three bearings. That kind of helps do this process without damaging your template. If you have one bearing and you take away this side here, it, there's, there's going to be no material left for that pocket. And then therefore, it it's, has a potential of that bearing falling below and then going into the side of the template at a point where the bearing is not, therefore damaging your template. So what I prefer is a half inch spiral carbide bit. I'll leave a link below in the, uh, in the video in description so that you can see which bit that I use. But I order extra bearings. You can get them off of eBay, probably anywhere else. They're half inch bearings, quarter inch a hole in the center and they just drop right in and I stack three on top of each other and that helps you take care of your templates and not damage them. You also want to just check that you have freedom of movement. There's no restrictions or binding or anything like that and we're good. And then the last thing that I do is I set my depth which I set for just under 16 millimeters so 5 eighths of an inch and my first pass has got to be with about half of that bearing visible in the bottom of the router. And that's so that you at least get a half a bearing riding on the acrylic, but you have a shallow enough depth of cut where you're not gonna leave material at the top of the guitar. So, so that's what I'm doing. That was pretty quick, but I've explained that in other videos. That's just kind of a reminder for you here.
The other thing that, I'm, that I wanted to say that I almost totally forgot to say is this, this neck pocket on the Maxim Guitar Works templates is designed on purpose to be about 20 thousandths of an inch larger uh, than the neck template. If you're gonna use a nitro um, lacquer finish, that's gonna take up about 15 thousandths. If you're gonna use a polyurethane finish, that's gonna take up about 20 thousandths. So, so that is designed to take up that slack. The inside of the pocket will get no finish at all. That will be left raw. Different people, when they're making their necks, may have an issue where they've done too much sanding and they've made the heel not as wide as what the template is. You really want, once you get done routing that, the sanding should be very minimal. Um, and so what I wanted to show is a technique and that technique is to take, and my preference is this brown tape, and to simply take the three sides that the router is going to be running on and line the inside of the template with that brown tape. Now, depending upon how nervous you are of whether your, your neck is under spec and if your neck pocket is going to be tight, you could do two, three uh, layers of tape. If, you've, if you need any more than that, you, your neck might be too far undersized. But you could add as much tape as you want. So in this particular case, I've got one, and I could add a second one just to be safe. Now, the whole idea is when you get done, you can then test fit your neck. Because remember, I can pull this template off and put it back in the exact same spot without any guesswork. And then I can test it, and I can make sure I can open it up some more. So I'm going to leave just one piece on there, but, but you need to figure out for yourself you know, how many pieces of tape you should line that with in order to, to kind of make sure that you, your neck pocket is not too big. Yeah, yeah, that's on you. Now you've noticed I've used no tape whatsoever to hold this template on. So therefore, I can lift it off, grab my intended neck, and see how she fits. In this case, it's too tight, okay? Because my template is actually gonna be perfect. So, so I'm gonna take the tape off and I'm gonna run it back through again and we'll see how it fits then. First pass again is with half the bearing showing. That's the secret to get a good clean first pass. Am I yelling right now? Am I talking loud? I'll give you a close-up. That's a good-looking pocket right there. And I'm going to emphasize one more time, that area right there, if you only had one bearing on a half-inch um, router bit, you would go under that and you would damage your template. That's why I use the triple stack bearings. Okay, at this point, I could definitely do my pickup cavities. The thing is, I just don't know what I want for the, for the pickups yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to be pretty traditional with that or if I'm going to try something a little bit crazier. Um, either way, that's going to wait till the next episode. But let's check out the, the neck now that we've done that last little piece of tape. And it, it is amazing how one little piece of tape can make so much of a difference, but now it's exactly where I want it to be. Nice, snug, but not overly tight, um, and uh, good fit on the sides. All right, before I start showing you some of the specific drop top procedures, uh, this is a good time to point out why I go all the way through. If I pound these pins so that they are flush, Now they're sticking out the back, and let's say that you ended up getting the belly cut template. Now it's a matter of laying that directly on those pins, making that mark, and it's done. It's that simple. If you had a tremolo cavity, like on the Strat version, which I haven't quite released yet, 
but it's the same way. The back tr trim cavity is just as perfect as alignment as the front because the alignment pins go all the way through front to back. All right, if you purchase my neck pocket template, uh, there'll be a couple routes on the top. And what is that for is for drop tops. All right, so when you're using uh, a laminate top, okay, this is a quarter inch paduke that's going to be going on top of this walnut. Um, instead of routing all the cavities out after it's glued on and then having to angle the drill bit to create the wire channels, we have the ability to route those channels in the body blank first. That saves us a step and it actually is a whole lot easier and it's a better process. And what you'll see on this, it says route for drop tops and then it says bushing uh, 3 8 inch bushing quarter inch bit. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got a quarter inch spiral upcut bit right here. I've got a 3 8 inch bushing guide here that will go in the bottom of my router. So this bit will come out in the center of that bushing guide. So these slots are 3 8 inch wide, but they're designed for a quarter inch and you can go as deep as you want. If you want to only go a quarter inch, that's fine. If you want to go a half inch, that's fine. More than enough space for all the cabling that you would have. Okay, and the reason why I use the bushing guides as opposed to just a quarter inch pattern bit, which are harder to find and more delicate um, and also more treacherous in a, in a sense that when you're working with a tight confine like this and if you're trying to use a top bearing a pattern bit to get down into there to start that first cut and to route that there's a chance that you miss and you damage your template or mess up your guitar body or something like that. The safest thing to do is to have the bushing guide drop into that space and then you plunge the router to whatever depth or in multiple passes normally if you're going to go uh, a quarter inch, you know, maybe an eighth inch at a pass um, or what have you. But drop in and you follow it stop to stop, side to side. If there's any slop side to side, which is really none in this template, um, then you just go all the way around and you get that channel pre-done. Now what will connect these channels together is when the pickup cavities are routed in there then that opens up that channel and then you have access to get all the way through the guitar into the electronics cavities to the pickup cavities. Okay so this is the method that I use to do that and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right before I route this let's talk about the actual top. The top I use the exact same procedure as as that poplar body. I drill my holes with the, the drill guide bushings, perfect perpendicular quarter inch holes. I've got dowel pins holding that in place. In this particular case, I traced a fat pencil line all the way around because I wanted to give myself about three millimeters, roughly an eighth of an inch offset on the sides and I'm not going to flush cut this. What I'm gonna do is after this top is glued on to this guitar body, I will then use this body to flush cut. And the reason why is if there's ever any deviation, maybe you had a little chip out, so all of a sudden the upper horn you had to kind of sand down, you know, to kind of smooth and feather out that chip out, then this will copy that for that last two, three millimeters. So it won't be, it won't be an issue and nobody would know the difference. All right, so, so that's what I've done to this. So this is basically ready to be mounted on here as soon as I get my cavities. And I'm also going to do a forearm contour and I'm going to bend that forearm contour. Uh, and uh, that's uh, a subject for a non-template, but um, you'll, see, you'll see basically how I do it. Now, because I'm using the bushing guide, I'm already in the slot and I have freedom of movement back and forth, just double checking. Now I can begin to plunge down into the wood. So neck pocket templates aren't just for neck pockets anymore. Remember that. It's a new slogan. Um, I've got that one done. Now I would have to do this one, but I'm going to switch over to a different template because I'm going to do a slightly modified uh, wire route for this one uh, because I'm going to make this actually 
with no pick guard on top and just rear access to the control cavity. All right, there's all my routes. And now the top is ready to get placed on there. I am gonna do my forearm contour first, and then I'll bend this over top of that. And then it'll end up having some binding going around it too. So it's gonna be a pretty cool looking guitar to go along with this uh, bound neck that I've done on the previous template video. So that'll be ready. Now I can't do the neck pocket yet because I've got to get the top glued into place first. So, um, so that'll come later. The pickup cavities will come later. Now this body is still too thick. Um, it's, it's one and seven eighths plus a quarter inch top. It's so it's three eighths uh, too thick. But I did that on purpose because I'm going to be using a slice of the back to create the grain matched pickup covers for the back. So I'm just leaving that on until I'm ready to route out my rear electronics covers. So that's part three of the template, the Maxim Guitar Works template series. In part four of this series, we're actually going to do the cavities and you'll see how I can use those or I'm going to show you how I can interchange those template if I want different pickups. And those are the optional a la carte template guides that you see in the information below this video so that you can get the maximum performance out of these templates, pun intended. Till next episode, remember, no matter what you do, start with excellence.